<laughs> so this indicates what a big deal this is, losing you here at the Urban Institute. So I want to say, first of all, Tom Gladwin is truly a true blue Michigan man. He earned his MBA here in 1971. He got his PhD here in International Business and Natural Resources Policy way back in the previous century, in 1975. In some ways, his career actually appears very conventional. He took a position as assistant professor at NYU as he graduated from Michigan. He progressed through the ranks and became a full professor in 1990. He came back to um, Michigan in 1998 as the Max McGraw Professor of Sustainable Enterprise, and he taught here for 16 years. Sounds very conventional, right? Very ordinary. But as you all know, Tom Gladwin is anything but conventional. You begin to suspect this when you first go to the Gladwin Barn and you notice the little sign that says, Hippies use sideboard. <laughs> Added to the Gladwin mystique are the persistent rumors that he used to have hair down to his belly button and that he bought his house from a convicted drug dealer. <laughs> Consider his reaction to working in the world of Don Draper. I completed my MBA at Michigan in 1971. I went into advertising where I was assigned to introduce a new laundry detergent and was sold to lie about it. I learned early on that the world of Madison Avenue was a corrupt place. And when you hear the talk that Andy mentioned, the Ten Commandments of Unsustainable Capitalism, you begin to wonder how he ever snuck into a business school at all. In fact, Tom's first publication, I went back to look at his CV also, his first publication was in 1975 and it was called an environmentally oriented mode of industrial project planning. In fact, all of his early work was on the environmental impact of multinational corporations. Well, that was, he wasn't the only person writing about this in 1975. Garrett Hardin wrote The Tragedy of the Commons in 1968. Barry Commoner wrote The Closing Circle in 1971. And The Limits to Growth came out in 1972. But what made Tom different was that he was saying this stuff from inside an elite business school. And he wrote and spoke very provocatively. His most influential journal article came in 1995. It was called Shifting Paradigms for Sustainable Development, Implications for Management Theory and Research. As of today, it has been cited 1,232 times. And I'm going to read you the